Hello folks, Doug here. Welcome back to yet another board game channel and yet a, another few rounds of Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. Doing the Gangs of Arkham scenario. Trying to solve a grisly murder in order to prevent a gang war. There's a, yeah, a couple of gangs, both of whom are little on edge because of this this murder so if we can figure out who did it maybe things will calm down a bit uh we got slowed down a little bit last turn because a uh, policewoman showed up uh and booted us out of this room where there are probably some very important clues so we are going to try our best to get in and out of there quickly um yeah, depending on, well, I have a plan, depending on how well Harvey can do it, opening this up. Uh, Finn can go in and do all the searching in one turn. Uh, and if I'm successful at getting in, you'll see why. All right, um, yeah, we'll give this a go. So we are going to go right into our investigator phase. Okay, up first is going to be Harvey who is going to try to, well, I'm hoping we can try to unlock the door again. Yes, we can attempt to pick the lock. And um, Harvey has got, well, we've all got very good observation at four. So we're all going to be pretty good at doing that. So let's uh, have a look at the puzzle. Probably cut a way to solve it. If I'm lucky, it's exactly the same puzzle. Yes, using observation, we know. No, okay, give me a minute to think here. Okay, like before, it seems terribly easy. One, two, three, four. There we go. Puzzle completed. Uh, yeah, glancing around to see if anyone's watching. You turn the knob, and oh, you're, okay, yep, we get rid of that. Now, uh, you may move one space into the explored area. I'm not actually going to do that. What we're going to do... I'm just worried that if um, either of us are caught in there that the uh, police officer, I've already forgotten her name, shoot, it's like Alice, it began with an A, um, might show up again and um, this time possibly arrest us. So... What we are going to do is whoop, just knocking card piles over. Harvey is going to use his implant suggestion again. Another action within range may perform one action, then flip this card. We are going to give that action to Finn. So what he is going to do is do a search action. But he gets to, once around, you may move one space before or after performing a search action. So he is going to do that. He is going to get a free move. And then he's going to search. Uh, so let's see. Well, we want to search both things. So we're going to start with... I'm just going to put this out so I remember that we need to flip that over after we uh, perform Finn's action. Let's look at the, um, yeah, let's look at the suitcase first. Lying on a wood table against the far wall, contents might tell you something useful about the victim. You dig through the victim's suitcase, looking for any clues about who this person was and why they were killed. Amongst the clothes, you find a journal with a worn leather cover bound in string. Gain the old journal unique item and one clue. Then discard this search token. The investigator holding the old journal can read its entries by interacting with it in the app. So, doo -doo -doo, okay, unique items. Doo -doo -doo, G H I J K L M N O, old journal. Here we go. Evidence this journal entry in the culprit's own handwriting is practically a confession. Not entirely truthful in this case, but. All right, so Finn has that. I, uh, I'm just going to have a look. I assume that it will take an action to... Yeah, it'll take an action to read the journal 
I'm going to save that for later. All right, that uh, means now we need to suffer the side effects of implant suggestion, or Harvey does. The, plow the power flows through you intoxicating and vast. I'm going to test his lore, and we need ooh, three successes. Uh, right, move the camera. All right, his lore is four. Might not succeed. This this much tougher than the last time he did the spell. Holy cow, he did it. Go, Harvey. If you pass, connecting your mind with another has hidden benefits. Improve one skill of your choice. Uh, then discard this card and gain another copy of the spell. Ooh, okay. So, we now have... If I could just get a token out. Yeah, we have these little uh, improvement tokens that you can now add to a character. You can only improve a skill once. Um, not like uh, Eldritch Horror where you can improve it up to twice. So, uh, let's see, what do we want to do? His ag Maybe we do want to improve his agility because it's pretty low at two. He's, he's, pretty, he's quite good at everything else. Um, or do we just want to make him incredibly good at something else? Maybe, yeah, you know what, let's, let's improve his observation. Let's make him even more awesome at that than he already is. All right, then, uh, yeah, I'll do that off camera, get rid of this, and uh, get him another copy of the spell. Okay, now we're going to move to Finn's actual turn. All right, so now Finn still gets himself two actions. The first one is going to be searching the coat on the bed. I believe it is coat. Yes, the victim's coat rests on the bed. He must have taken it off before he was attacked. Search. You decide to search the victim's coat pockets for anything that might tell you more about who he was and why he was killed. We're going to test uh, Finn's observation. Got two successes, he doesn't have any clues, eh, so we're only going to get to put on two. Hopefully it's enough. Sometimes it is. Good. Lifting the coat, you notice it feels heavier than expected. You locate the source of the extra weight in the right side pocket of reach in, pulling out a small firearm. Gain the .18 Derringer common item. Okay. It's right on top of the pile. It's a firearm. No gal should be out on the town without a bit of protection. Although I think maybe we'll try to get this off to um, Harvey. That way we all have... Uh, that way everybody has a weapon. But yeah, we'll worry about that next. And let's take away that token. Oh! In the same pocket as the gun, you find the victim's driver's license. It identifies him as Marlon Dietz, a resident of Boston, Massachusetts. It, lift, it lists him as 6 feet 2 inches and 220 pounds. A big man, I'll say. It would take a very strong assailant to kill such a man without a struggle. Or perhaps he was taken by surprise. Oh, not satisfied with your original fi initial findings, you check the rest of the coat's pockets. You find a small pocket hidden on the inside left breast of the coat. Inside, you find a gold pocket watch. Gain the pocket watch common item. Uh, M-N-O-P. There we are, pocket watch. This bit of equipment, you may perform one additional puzzle step while attempting a puzzle. Okay, then we can discard the search token. Wow, that was quite, that was quite successful. Um, and that was only his first action, so he is going to, for his second action, we're going to move one, two, and get out of that room. So now if um, our uh, detective shows up, we can just, oh no, officer, we're just standing around here in the dark, 
Um, but you know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, that worked about as well as it possibly could. Uh, that leaves us with, uh, we're going to see what Min can do. Okay, as you want to get things happening as fast as possible, we're going to take a bit of a risk with Min and send her out into the streets to have a little look around. So for her first movement, her most first action, she's going to move two spaces. So she's going to move one and a two out into that alley, which means we are going to get to see what's here. The alley opens onto a street corner. An investigator in alley two may reveal the adjacent. Yes, we are going to do so. There we are. The alley intersects with the street at a street corner. Plus the, place the street corner one tile as indicated. Uh, back in a sec. All right, there we are, street corner one. The circular window on this door looks in on a diner. Oh, well, well, yes, we knew there was a diner because of that. Anything else? Okay. A modest sign for the Arkham Gazette. Adorns, uh, uh, Arkham's second largest newspaper, adorns the wall above a door. The loud sound of heavy machinery uh, carries through the wall. Place an explore token as indicated. Okay, that is all. So for her second action, well, she's not going to get to actually do it. Yeah, all she can do is move. Um, kind of partial to the diner. It's a place where a number of people might be gathered to get us uh, information. So we're going to move her one, two, might as well go there. Well, doesn't much matter. Both of those are going to lead into the diner. So that concludes our investigator's actions, which means we're going to move on to the dreaded mythos phase. Right. Um, word of warning, it's entirely, pass and po entirely possible my wife will return from doing something in the middle of filming, so I might be a sudden jump cut as I stop recording when she steps in. Just fair warning. Okay, so on to the terrible phase. The worst phase of all. Whispered voices drift through the halls. Finn Edwards glances about anxiously, looking for the sounds of, looking for where the sounds could be coming from. While distracted, he walks face first into a wall. Finn Edwards suffers one face down damage. Dude, watch watch where you're going. Okay, face down anyway. What happens after that? Oh, that is it. Okay, so, uh, time to ponder our next actions. Okay, before deciding exactly where to send Finn and Harvey, um, going to have Min check out the diner. Um, see if it's a really scary place, and if they both need to back her up, or if it seems not too terrible and maybe just send one off to be with her. So, we're going to do this first. We're going to, yes, look, circular window on this door looks in on a diner. The diner is a typical greasy spoon with a long counter and several booths with leather seats. There are only a few customers this evening. Place the diner tile and a wall as indicated and discard all the explore tokens. Going to grab a wall because I went ahead and got the tile out because I knew there was going to be a diner here. Although, we're going to have to stop recording so I can move the camera anyway because it is huge. All right, there we go. So, we have you might find something of use in the kitchen. Search token. It's probably just a knife or something. Oh, I uh, need a person token. 
Can I quickly find that? Oh, yes, actually I can. In the back booth, a man in a suit and a fedora sits alone facing the front door. His face seems to be perpetually in shadow, regardless of the angle from which you view it. Well, that's not worrying. His hands, folded on the table in front of him, are clad in gloves as red as blood. Place the person token. And I need another one. Uh, oh, which I found right away. A waitress in a grease-painted, a grease-stained apron is busy clearing a table next to the door. Uh, place a person token is indicated. This is Katie, the waitress. You may move one space into the explored area. All right. Uh, well, it seems fairly non-threatening. <laughs> Guess we don't need both Finn and Harvey to go off there. Uh, well, she has one more action. So we may as well just speak to Katie because she's right there. Sit wherever you like, Katie says. She appears tired but still musters a smile for you. And the warmth in her tone makes you feel welcome. So we can, as an action, ask one of three things. What's the day special? Can I have a moment of your time? And where's Velma? I don't know if we need to know where Velma is. I wonder if we should be polite and uh, say what's today's special first, or just go into, can I have a few minutes of your time? Yeah, we're probably on a clock, so let's say, can I have a few minutes of your time? Traffic is pretty light tonight, so I can spare a minute, Katie answers. What can I do for you? You inquire as to what she knows about the murder last night. I heard about that this morning, she says. Terrible thing. I didn't see anything myself. From what one police officer told me, it happened about the time we closed up for the night at 11. We did have a few customers late that evening who might have seen something. One of them spent much of the evening in a booth by the window, but she left about an hour before we closed. Gain a clue. And now there's two clues. And that is it. So, that's the end of Min's actions. Uh, let's see what the boys are going to get up to. Alright, so we're going to have Harvey go next. Because, um, well, first of all, he's going to do his move action. Just going to take one of the moves right now. <clears throat> um, wait, you can break up movement, fortunately, and in between, uh, for his second action, he's going to do a trade action with Finn and get himself the Derringer. So everybody now has a weapon. And then he finishes his movement by going into there. <clears throat> Finn, um, they were going to send Finn off here. He's, he's, he's a bootlegger. He might be able to, uh, talk his way into, uh, a secret door there. So we're going to do two movement for him because uh, there's really not much else to be done. So one, two, and for his second action, one, two. So that will bring us into our next mythos phase. Uh, let's just go right into it. Confirm. Oop. The diner door opens, and in walks Detective Luxley. Uh, back in a moment. All right. Uh, all right, we're over there by the waitress, and yes, in walks the detective. Finn Edwards. Oh, Finn again. Uh, just a second, he is down a tiny bit. There we go. <clears throat> Has lost his way. Suddenly desperate for a familiar landmark or clue to his location, Finn Edwards suffers two face down horror. Uh, we can negate with his observation. Uh, then he flips two horror face up. All right, uh, I'm just gonna 
move the camera for a sec. Okay, his observation is four. We're trying to prevent two. <clears throat> we prevented one. Um, we could use this gambler's dice and um, change one of these to a blank to re-roll everything else. Ah, uh, what the heck. Let's give it a go. So, this is now a blank. Hey, it worked. He, uh, he prevented both of the face-down horror, and then he has no horror to flip up. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, back to investigator phase. Okay, we're going to start with Finn. See what he can do about getting into this speakeasy or whatever it is. They are going to... Nondescript door leads into the building across the alley from the hotel. As you can see on the door, the outline of a small slotted eye level allowing someone inside to look out. Knock on the door. There we go. The slat in the uh, slat at the door slides open, and a pair of eyes peer out at you through the, the open slot. Password. A gruff voice demands. You do not know the password, so your only hope is to try to convince the doorman to let you inside. We are going to test his influence. Ah, I guess I should have sent Harvey. Uh, let's see, just put the dice there. Although, I mean, his influence is not too shabby at four. Still got the gambler's dice if we, uh, if it's an extremely poor roll. Two. I think we're going to have to stick with two. Uh, yeah, it's unlikely we're going to get three re-rolling the three dice. So, one, two, and no password, no entry. The doorman answers gruffly, then quickly slides the slat shut. I mean, we can, so yeah, we could, could try again. Ah, if only we could get Harvey over there first. But no, Finn's got to finish off his action, so you know what, we're, we're going to try again. Knock on the door. So we're going to test this again. These are often cumulative, so hopefully... Move you out of the way. And he got another two. Let's see if it's any better. Or if we get exactly the same result. No, we got the same result. Shoot. Okay, well... That means we clearly need to send Harvey there. Because he's our... Uh, with his fine clothes, he actually has five influence. So, for Harvey's actions, we're going to move one, two. Uh, fortunately, well, you know what? Let's say he's not going to get there this turn. He's going to have to move. That'd be a waste. What the heck? For his other action, another investigator within range gains a clue. So, let's give... Let's give Finn a clue, so he's a little better at re-rolls and the like. So yeah, that's it for um, yeah, that's it for the guys. So uh, now, uh, yeah, back to the diner and Min. Now Min's got a few options. She could continue talking to the waitress, um, chat with. Detective Luxley, or head over to the guy at the uh, sitting in the um, sitting in the booth up there. Uh, I think first action we're going to start by talking to the waitress. Okay. Um, yes, we have a few different dialogue options this time. Well, we still have what's today's special. Can you give me the names of uh, the customers you had last night, or more specifically, we can say, tell me more about the person who was here a long time. 
Yeah, let's ask about that person. That sounds a little more... Oh, <laughs> okay. Her name is Alice. <laughs> Katie replies, Alice Luxley. She's right there. She's right there, guys. Am I focused? Let's see. Um, she spent much of the evening in here last night in that booth right by the window. She must have had a dozen sodas while she sat there, just staring out the window. I know Alice a bit since she lives down the hall from me at the Humphrey Court Apartments downtown. And she comes around here on occasion, but last night she seemed distracted and preoccupied with something. I asked if she was waiting to meet someone, but she said no, Katie continues. She said it politely, but it was obvious she did not want to be bothered, so I didn't inquire further. She finally left about an hour before we closed at 11. Gain a clue. So Min's up to three clues now. So she needs to roll. She's golden. <laughs> So, uh, just to see what has changed with Katie, we now have an option to get Alice's address. I think what we'll do, Alice is right there. Uh, what can you tell me about last night's murder is the only dialogue option. And before, she didn't really... Oh, no, wait, we didn't get a chance to ask her that. We said, sorry, we were just looking into it, and she said, don't, and left. All right, second action. Let's see what Alice says. It appears to have been a gang-related killing. Yeah, right. The deceased had ties to the Sheldon gang. He was an out-of-town hooch runner from Boston looking to enter a new market. And look at that, another clue. So, Min has four clues. We need her to do some of the rolling. That is it for her actions. Not getting a whole lot of info, but we are collecting a bunch of clue tokens anyway. All right, so one final mythos phase. Yes, end it. Detective Luxley turns and walks away, her dark black ponytail swinging behind her as she disappears from sight around a corner remove her from the board. Well, at least we got to get that last bit of talking to her before she vanished. Anything else? Oh, yes, uh, I need to find another person token. A shady looking man in a trench coat appears from around the corner of the hotel and hurriedly walks down the street. This is the gangster. The objects Harvey Walters has collected become crushing weights, punishing his tired limbs. Harvey Walter suffers two damage, and negate with strength. For each damage he suffers, he drops one random item uh, over to the dice tower. Okay, unfortunately, Harvey only has three strength and no clue. However, he yeah, got two successes, so he negated it both. He doesn't have to to drop anything, and that is the end of the Mythos phase. We will just save and quit, and leave it at that. We'll see what transpires next episode. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and liking the videos, both on YouTube and Board Game Geek. I appreciate it, and we will see you next time for yet another round of Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. So long.